Welcome back to our VP series here at ITR Economics. My name is Kimberly Clark. I am Vice President of Sales and Marketing. This is my colleague, Jackie Green. She is the Vice President of Economics. And for those of you who have joined us the last two episodes, will notice there is a new face here with us today. Joseph Folio, our newest Vice President, VP of Technology. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here today. I, I know we have a lot in store and I can't wait to get started talking about it all. Agreed. And singing. <laughs> you gonna sing some more? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this episode as well. The first two episodes of our VP series were really foundational in context. They were laying the groundwork for who Jackie and I are, um, this next generation leadership team behind the very well-known faces of Brian and Alan Bolio, um, and now Joe, the VP of Technology. Um, so this episode, we'll dive a little bit into that with Joe on his background and what he's done here so far at ITR Economics, as well as the vision um, of future technologies, specifically to, with an eye to how it's going to best help support our customers and our clients and what they need from us. But a new item that we're gonna be adding to this episode is talking about a theme. And today's theme is planning a business cycle ahead and the importance of that. We talk um, with our clients very often about the importance of planning a business cycle ahead. And today we get the opportunity to pick Jackie's brain as VP of economics and start answering some fundamental questions. What do we mean by that? Why is it important? Uh, there's a lot of headlines out there that can cause confusion and frustration. And we're gonna talk about some of those items so that we, we can use this as an opportunity to shed some light on ITR's perspective of some of the current events that you're reading in the news. So without further ado, uh, Joe, you want to get us kicked off here on our episode today and tell our audience a little bit about yourself and the technology advancements we have going on here? Well, happy to be here, Kim. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, I'm excited to be a part of this team, this group here, and a part of this VP series. Uh, I started working at ITR in 2017 after spending 10 years with the U.S. government, uh, working all around the uh, world with them. And I... I have a passion for that cybersecurity side of the operations and really listening to where efficiencies could be made and how we can really hone in on those and get uh, use automation to help with that. And that experience that I had really lended itself well here at IT Economics. I'm really excited that what we've accomplished since I've started here, uh, you know, I think of IT on demand, it's such a fantastic tool where we can really provide all of those tools and the consulting reports and everything to the clients quicker and in a secure and way and so that way we're not emailing it back and forth uh, we're able to handle their data without worrying about that transmission you know we're protecting the client uh, and what uh, we're protecting the client by doing that um, and what we've done internally it, it's amazing where we've come from the excel world to now using uh, web applications while having a focus on our core values and our core of who we are at ITR, that our forecast accuracy is second to none. We, that is our pride, that is our focus for our clients. And we've been able to do that while improving through automation. It's, it's great to see, I love it. And I'm really excited what we're gonna be talking about today and the roadmap we have going forward. Agreed. And actually you made me think of something when you started talking about on demand. We are very excited for this online portal um, that we now have available for our clients. Um, but it made me think most of the people in our audience, when they think of ITR, they probably think to our keynotes that we provide out on the road and our speakers, where a very large part of our business is actually in sales forecasting. We work in a consultative nature with our clients and looking at their sales data, forecasting it forward 12 quarters and that allows us to help them plan that business cycle ahead and even further, uh, which ties in very nicely to what we're gonna be picking Jackie's brain about later on in today's episode is why is that important and what are some of the strategies we use and we recommend you use um, to, to look that far ahead into the future. So I'm looking forward to that part of today's episode. Uh, Joe, so 
I love all the technologies that you've brought to us. I am not handy when it comes to technology. You've had to be very patient with me over the years. I'm sure I've heard many times, Kim, unplug it, wait 30 seconds, plug it back in. Um, but you're absolutely correct in that the technologies that you are bringing to ITR are increasing our efficiencies um, as well as giving our clients an on-demand experience, quick, immediate access to the crucial information that they need to build their strategies. Um, so with that, I have in my head kind of this vision that you've been sharing with me of some of the strategies you see for ITR in the future. Would you mind just taking a few moments and sharing with our audience some of that vision? What are some of these um, major milestones that we have coming um, over the next say, three to five years? What I'm really excited about with this roadmap is how we come out or come up with the strategy. We're not looking at what are just the current trends or where we want to go. It's what works best for the business and what our clients are looking for. And that's where we f really form that foundation of our strategy. You know, everything we do here is for our clients. And that doesn't change when it comes to tech. Uh, we're not just going to look for what the hot item is or what buzzwords are out there right now. It's what works best for our clients because that's who our target is. That's what we want to do. And one of the things I'm really excited about and this is IT. This is this is a technology person excited. Look, there's a smile. Okay, <laughs> I am so excited for the new experience we're going to be bringing it on demand. We're we're in the early stages of working and really designing what that looks like. But it's bringing that whole experience to them. Now we have phenomenal products. You know what the economists are able to bring to the clients is second to none. But now we're bringing it all into one platform and one experience, so they can log in and see all of their tools brought together and provide that real uh, true experience in one place so they don't have to go looking for it. I mean, that's big. That's huge. I love it. Uh, and I, the clients are going to really enjoy that, being able to see that my experience, that my on-demand. Um, so you know, that is not even in the, that far of our future for us. Uh, we're really looking at doing that soon. Uh, we're, in the, like I said, in the design stage of it, and we're going to be bringing that. And it starts with how they first interact with ITR. And that's where we're going to start. We're just going to then step through the stages of the, of the client being with us. I'm also really excited about the way your team is helping with our forecasting. You are developing tools to help us track our forecast accuracy better so we can really hone in on what series and where we can help ourselves improve, but also developing better tools so that we're able to run different analysis and really strengthen the forecasting we've been honing for the last 75 years and make it that much better as we're going into the next decade. I'm really excited for what your team is doing there. It is exciting uh, that what we're working on, being able to get real-time information, being able to see, uh, get that data and make actionable decisions as, uh, as we're working on those forecasts or as we, you're training or bringing on more employees. Uh, as we had mentioned many times, you've mentioned in previous VP series, and we'll say it again today, our forecast accuracy is of utmost important to us. So if we can have those tools to show us how we're doing, we can make those real-time decisions. Mm. So Joe, before we start talking about planning for the business cycle ahead and uh, the importance behind that and why that's kind of a, a catchphrase here, uh, would you mind just sharing with our audience some of your vision, some of that roadmap for uh, say 5, 10, 15 years from now? What does ITR look like to you 10 years from now? Um, a very different environment with the 2030s Great Depression on the horizon. I know we talk about it a lot. Uh, so just curious if you could share with us some of what you see coming down that road. I think it's just as important to look at what is coming down the road, like you mentioned, as much as it is what is the 20, 2030s will look like. Uh, what we do now matters. Uh, Kim, recently you even said, I'm going to shout from the rooftop at what, what to do, how to plan, how to prepare for it. And that's what we need to do. That's what ITR is here for, is to get people prepared. Not just companies, but individuals as well. And we need to tell this to everyone. And what we do, how we can plan that, and how we can say that message it now is going to help that many more people get through those 2030s. But they're going to be here. The 2030s are going to be here whether we want them to be or not. Uh, so if we can be prepared, planning for it, great. But we'll also be there for our clients then. 
as well and how you know in that moment what is happening what is that m maybe more short term or where does the end uh when is that end going to be here uh, so what we can do matters now and then and prepare them for the after you know, as we get through the other side of it uh, from a technology side it's really about being efficient the more efficient we can be the better off our company will handle those 2030s now uh, if we can get rid of the um, redundancies if you're able to find where to automate automate is a key word i mean it's something that we should all be asking ourselves how do we eliminate uh, redundancies how do we get more efficient and how can we automate and be prepared for that time period before we get there you know, we should be listening to itr economics and we should be listening to ourselves and say when are the good years and how can we invest in those times into technology to prepare for those lean years. And I see ITR being a critical part to that. Agreed. Well, and that ties us in nicely, that planning ahead is so paramount to success and being yeah. proactive instead of reactive um, in our business strategy. Uh, so I think that moves us nicely into the other part of our episode today in that are you planning a business cycle ahead? And if not, why? Um, unsure how to get started, unsure of its importance. Um, we've been talking that there's in the, the headlines and the media talking about uh, mixed signals. Are we in a recession? Are we not in a recession? Is there a recession coming? Is there not a recession coming? Um, and so we're here today to try to help be the guiding light that we have always been and answer some of those questions for you. Jackie, I know you're asked these types of questions all the time. Um, so maybe if we just start with the first one that I mentioned, which is, are we in a recession right now? Well, I'm going to give an econ answer. It depends. I wouldn't expect it <laughs> any other way. <laughs> it depends how you're looking at things. Uh, technically, yes, U.S. GDP went down for two consecutive quarters, which makes it a recession. That's the definition we've been using for as long as I can recall, for as long as I've been at ITR. Uh, that's the definition. So by that standard, yes, we are in recession. However, and this is why it's why economists, I think, get a bad rep here. Uh, however, not everyone's in real recession right now. Yes, U.S. GDP contracted, but it was very mild contraction. And when we look at the components about what actually contracted, it's not the majority of our economy really feeling that pain. There was government spending that contracted, which makes perfect sense because we cut back on all that stimulus spending. The parts of the consumer that were really pulled back during those quarters were more along the lines of things that really s excelled during the pandemic. And for quick examples, I'm talking your Pelotons, your home furniture, those sorts of things. They really excelled during the pandemic because consumers were stuck at home. So they were spending in their environment. Now they're able to get out and their environment's bigger again. So they're spending all over the place. and. That's why when we look a little broader out, we're going to say, are you in your own business in recession? U.S. industrial production is not in a recession. U.S. retail sales are not in a recession. Uh, employment certainly not in a recession either. So it really becomes a question of, yes, U.S. GDP technically entered a recession, but you have to ask yourself, are you in a recession? Are your markets in a recession? And what are you going to do about it? Don't get caught up in that headline. Actually, just yesterday, I was talking with someone who saw one of our speakers last week, and they, they were just singing the speaker's praise. They were loving it. They say, I see all these awful headlines, and it's so scary. And then I go to one of your presentations, and it's just clear, it's clean cut, and I feel so much more at peace, and I understand what's going on that much better. So short answer, sorry, was depends <laughs> on how you're measuring recession. Um, but it's really got to be more focused on what you're doing as a company right now in your individual markets. I have a question for you. How do I ignore the headlines? You know, I just feel like I'm in a recession. I heard what you had to say that says I may or may not be depending on the business I'm in. But how do I stop reading or paying attention or worrying about those headlines I'm seeing out there? Follow ITR. I mean, that's a good short answer. I was going to be a little snarky with you, Joe, and say you took off your smartwatch today. That's a big help. Um, I mean, that's a really big part of it. Is you have to have trusted 
metrics that you can follow to really give you that confidence. That's why we have leading indicators and we follow those so that we don't get caught up in the daily headlines or what the news is. And the, the news is critical. It's an important part of the big picture, but it cannot be the only part of the picture. You need really steadfast data that can clear up the noise and remove the emotion. I know that sounds kind of normal coming from an economist to say remove the emotion, but that's true. We all have emotional reactions. We cannot change that. We get caught up in the news and the headlines and it's scary at times, but you have to have that trusted network of advisors, whether it's ITR economics or your data. You have to know what you can reliably count on. It's interesting. So when you were speaking, it made me think of one of my favorite quotes from one of our clients. Um, uh, ITR's data-driven approach removes the emotional inputs from my business decisions. Um, yes. It's just one of my favorites. Um, but with that, all right, so that's one of the major uh, buzzwords or headlines <laughs> that are out there. So let's get another buzzword out of the way but so that way we can dive into why we're here to talk about planning a business cycle right. ahead. Last buzzword that we'll cover in today's episode, inflation. <laughs> uh, let's chat inflation for a couple right. minutes. I'm so proud of neither of you for running and hiding under a couch. That's I was tempted. Common thing. I was tempted. Uh, again, that's another one that's scary. We see all those headlines about inflation reaching the highest point in 40 years and all sorts of things. And it is scary. You see it at the pumps. You see it at the grocery store, you see it all over. However, it's temporary. You gotta remember these are transitory effects. We are actually already seeing the easing inflation. And this is where I'm gonna go into a little econ lesson, okay? There are three main parts of inflation that we're looking for. There's the inflation part that we're all seeing with the rising prices, that's very common. There's also disinflation, which is where prices are rising, but they're rising at a slowing rate. That's kind of also thinking of it as easing inflation. And then there's deflation. That's where prices actually decrease. They're coming down. So we've been in this period of really accelerating inflation and it's something we haven't seen a lot of for quite a while, over 40 years, as we were just saying, actually. But we are seeing deflation in certain parts and disinflation is an increasing trend across many parts of the economy. And we expect that to be continuing through 2023. So. It is relief coming, but it's not going to be uniform. Like You're going to see commodity prices coming down faster than you're going to see wage inflation coming down. We're going to still see upward pressure on wages for a lot longer than we're going to see it on steel prices. And that goes back to our econ of supply and demand. We are still facing an employment issue when we are looking for that qualified workforce. When I think of headlines, I also think of ITR and we have notices and blogs and uh, trends talks. We have so much information that we're providing. Mm -hmm. um, it, maybe it's me when the technology side of things, I may be biased here, but I love how we also are able to bring that information out quickly to our clients. They, they don't need to wait 30 days to hear from us. If we see something uh, that needs to be discussed immediately, we're gonna take action on that and provide that to the, our customers, our clients. Uh, I love it. I think that's a great way to help ease the anxiety that you're reading in the headlines is go to ITR and see what we're saying about it. Jackie, what we all want to know is what are the top three things that I need to know for building my strategy looking one economic cycle out? Well, first thing you need to know is where your markets are going. If they're hanging for a recession, if they'll be in a soft landing, what sort of growth potentials there, you need to be acutely aware of that so you can be planning and setting your expectations. Second thing you need to do is figure out do you have all the resources you need to capitalize on what that environment is going to look like or do you have too many resources? You need to make sure your business is right sized for that sort of situation. And lastly, you need to be reaching out to us here at ITR because we can forecast your markets, we can forecast your company, we can help you really see with more detail where you're going so you can set some very realistic expectations and we can help you get there. We can also help you see what other markets might be outperforming during those periods. If most of yours are heading into recession, we can help you see which ones are gonna be more recession resistant so you are in a better position to outperform the competition. It's funny, Jackie, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, when Joe asked the question, I couldn't help but think that 
is somewhat making an assumption because if we're telling people to plan a business cycle ahead, we're already assuming they're calculating rates of change mm -hmm. um, and looking at the cyclical nature of the economic trends and, the, and their business. Um, and so, because in my mind, where my head jumped to when Joe asked the question um, is, well, I need to know what does the business cycle look like? Like, right? like, when is the low point? When is the high point? How high is the high and how low is the low? So that way I know how extreme my levers have to be that we're pulling inside the business to, to be able to navigate it the way that we want to navigate it. You're right. That's crucial. Uh, I admit I come from a little bit of a bias in this in that you ask me about a particular year and my mind instantly goes to looking at what U.S. industrial production looked like mm -hmm. during that year on the chart. That's how... My brain has just been so wired that way. I think I sleep and dream about rates of change these days. So we all appreciate that you are that in tune yes. with U.S. industrial production. Yes, we all appreciate that. Side note: We'll have to remember this. We need to get her a pillowcase that has T Pro on it. <laughs> yeah. I'll talk to Grace. Okay, <laughs> we'll get it done. Um, but you're absolutely right. Uh, you have been living and breathing, specifically looking into U.S. industrial production, looking into 2023, 2024 time frame. Maybe a great place to wrap up this episode would be to talk about should our audience be feeling anxious? Should they be having these concerns as though the world is falling apart, business is falling apart, the headlines can be scary and very confusing. So maybe we can end our episode with some of that outlook for 2023, 2024, so that way they can start working to put together a strategy um, looking that far into the future. Short version of things is 2023 is expected to be a period of slowing macroeconomic growth. And I'm gonna be talking big picture economy here. Your business might be slightly different and we'd love to help you with that in particular, but for this, we're gonna talk big picture. We do expect to see 2024 be a year of accelerating growth. We will see the economy pick back up at that faster pace than we had in 2023. That is our overall projection. However, there's always a risk, right? We can't avoid it and we gotta acknowledge it. And that's why we stay tuned and we are constantly watching this. Right now, the Federal Reserve has been raising rates pretty significantly. They have intentions to continue raising them. This poses some risk to the future, so we are watching that very closely because it could, it could impact 2023, 2024, more specifically the second half of 23 and into 24 than we originally expected. The war in Ukraine certainly has a risk to the forecast also because it can impact supply chains, it can impact natural gas and what that does for commodities, as we saw earlier this year, that impact on commodities. Uh, there's always risks to every forecast, but so far the lean indicators are holding steady with our outlook. We're in good shape, but it's definitely something we're watching for, and I understand the concern. That's why we are studying these things and on top of them daily, is to make sure that we catch these risks for you as fast as we can. I think that's a great point. Uh, it brings it back, Joe, to what you were saying with the technology that we have even today, not even what we're working towards for the future, is how quickly we can get this information into mm -hmm. our client's hand. It was so recent as um, last week I was speaking with Brian about doing regular video series on these changes that are happening and sending them out as video bulletins to our subscribers um, and our consultative clients. So that way, to your point, we are telling them and staying um, abreast of every developing situation for them and sharing that with them as quickly as possible. And we can do so as quickly as possible because of all the amazing work that you've brought to our company and continue to bring to our company um, as we move through this wild decade. So that was a lot of terminology, methodology, Jackie talking leading indicators, and we were chatting about rates of change. Our intent with this episode is to get you thinking of the importance of planning a business cycle ahead, at least a business cycle ahead, and giving you some insights into why that's so important. This difference between being proactive and reactive um, can be the difference between having a profitable year and an unprofitable year. But it is a lot. It's a lot of ITRisms, a lot of ITR lingo, 
On our website, we have a page that's ITR methodology that has a lot of resources that we have built specifically to help you with this, help you plan a business cycle ahead and using the strategies that we just talked about just a little bit in today's episode. So I would encourage you, please go to our website, download the eBooks and the one sheets and watch the videos, our YouTube channel. Um, our, it's ITR Economics um, on YouTube. There is a lot of video content in there. Our speakers walking you through visually how to calculate your rates of change. Our book, Make Your Move, on paper. So if you prefer reading instead of watching a video, we also have it in a book, How to Calculate Your Rates of Change. And after you've done all of that, if you want to take it even to the next step a little bit further, give us a call. We'd be happy to talk with you. We'd be happy to help you walk through it. Uh, we are here to be that trusted advisor by your side that can help you plan for the future and be successful in managing your business, leading your business. We thank you for joining us for our episode three of the VP series. We'll be back in next quarter with another topic that we can start unpacking and working on together to provide additional strategies and insights and um, hopefully be that um, media source for you that you know is unbiased and can steer you through the noise in the right direction. Thanks for joining.